I don't know why I just figured I could eat whatever I wanted to as long as I would exercise. That was like my whole motto. And so I was, I was really into fitness, um, but it wasn't really into the other health aspects. And eventually I just started getting, you know, sicker and sicker and I started having issues. Um, probably like a lot of people, I tried to ignore them and hoping that I could just kind of push on through, but mine just became so severe, probably more than most and way too young. And then, I mean, it got to the point where I had inflammation all over my body, my, my joints hurt. I couldn't even use a remote control. You know, I literally couldn't lift up a remote and change the channel. It hurts so bad. I couldn't walk for very long periods of time. I certainly couldn't exercise. So my body was withering away because I used to be a lot, a lot bigger. You know, I was really into the weight training thing. And um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I just lost my health. I started having uh, like autoimmune issues causing this inflammation. I had these uh, growths like tumors throughout my body. Um, what else did I have? I mean, obviously, I had the arthritic pain, my back, my neck, my shoulders, my wrists, my fingers, you know. I mean, I was literally at a level 10 pain, like just as as much pain as you can tolerate. And it was messing with my head because I, I couldn't move. I was literally in bed and just not even moving one inch. I would feel extreme pain. So I just couldn't move. It was very uncomfortable. It was a very sharp type of uh, nerve pain. And it felt like somebody was stabbing me, you know, when I would move. And so I just, I, I had no mobility. And it was extremely hard. And I couldn't even, it was, it was so difficult just to get to the bathroom. And it was like the hardest thing you could imagine, you know, the level of pain. Sometimes I would have to crawl on my elbows because I couldn't use my wrists and my hands because they hurt so bad. And even on my elbows, it was very painful. And I mean, it was just brutal, man. It was just, it was a really low point in my life. I think a lot of people, I mean, everybody has their own different issues, whether it's high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, you know, arthritis, everybody has their different stuff. But um, I, I had a bunch of things, even, even as you asked me, I mean, I have to try to remember all the things. It's like a, literally a list. I have to literally try to go down the list and try to remember everything that I was dealing with. I don't want to get too emotional here. Um, I don't know. I just knew, I mean, the medical establishment certainly didn't have any answers for me. I had a lot of experience working in the medical system, so I kind of knew how it all worked. Um, I still tried to go that route, but it didn't really do much good. Um, they didn't really know what was going on for the most part. I mean, they could see that I had a heart issue. The heart condition wasn't causing these problems. I just felt like I needed to find, you know, a solution to this because I just couldn't live like that. It was, it was to the point where I wanted to end my life. And I was really, really withering away. And I was trying everything. I was reading a lot of literature. I was reading a lot of scientific data, things about health. Um, trying to figure out what to do. And obviously, there's a lot of contradictory information. You know, there's like a million diets out there. Everybody tells you to do a different one. There's numerous different types of water. Everybody tells you to drink a different one. And it was really frustrating and confusing because there was really no consensus. And I would try to rely more on the scientific method as far as finding real legitimate scientific data. For example, when I thought about water, everybody was disagreeing about what the best water was. And one of the things that I do a lot of is I observe nature for answers. And I was like, well, how does nature purify water? So I started learning about the hydrologic system. And then I started looking at the like literally lab, like third party lab tests, which I actually have a, a book right here full of the data. And I started seeing what every single water filtration system and every modality there is of filtering water, what they do and what they don't filter out. And then I started realizing that a lot of those different methods they don't filter out everything. And then eventually I found, you know, that planet earth literally uses a form of distillation. That's how it cleans water. And then as I was researching all that, I stumbled upon hydrogen and I saw basically one of the first studies that were done on hydrogen. And I kept reading more and more about it. And it was, uh, I'm a, I'm a big skeptic. So for the people who don't know me, I'm extremely skeptical of just about everything. I mean, if you start talking to me about a specific type of diet or a specific type of product or a new type of water or this new doctor is promoting this, I'm skeptical. There's so much trash out there, in my opinion. Um, and so I really have to dig and look and read. And, and it has to make sense, in my opinion, right? So that's what I had to go through. 
And the hydrogen thing just seemed too good to be true. I didn't understand it. I thought it was a little bit of a scam. And I probably read the data for almost four years before ever trying it. And I was just getting so bad. I mean, I was withering away and I was in a lot of pain and life was really tough. And I'd pretty much lost everything. And so at that point, I was like, you know what, I got to try something. And I was trying different things. Things weren't working that well. And I kept reading the hydrogen data. And again, it just sounded too good to be true. And by the time I was ready to do it, I'm like, okay, where do I get this stuff? Um, I mean, I can't go down to the corner drugstore and buy hydrogen. And um, there were some different machines out there that I'd found, but I wasn't really quite clear on the best way to make it, the best way to use it. And there was not really much consensus on that part. And I didn't understand that engineering was going to play a huge role. All these things that I didn't want to learn about, to be honest, I didn't, I mean, I'm not an engineer, nor do I care to be an engineer. And I think engineers are cool and great and all that, but that's just not my forte. And engineering played such a big role. Um, there's a ton of things uh, to make hydrogen properly. It was the metal technology. So the science of metals is like extremely complex. Even to this day, we don't understand it completely. Um, the science of water and how it's going to work with the metals um, was another bit. I mean, it, it just got so complicated. It w and, and to find the information, I couldn't find it. I mean, I was going on YouTube, seeing if anybody was talking about hydrogen. Nobody was talking about hydrogen. Researching led me to different routes. And I tried all sorts of machines. I mean, I've had numerous machines throughout the years. And it really wasn't actually, I mean, the best results I ever got were actually from the Japanese device. And I found that device because every single time you looked at a hydrogen device, they have like um, all these numbers. And then of course I realized that none of these machines were actually being lab tested. None of these machines were certified. Um, and eventually many years later, when I did see some testing of some of these devices, they weren't making the amounts of hydrogen that were being claimed. So it, all this stuff led me down a path of just massive amounts of research. I became quite um, I don't want to say obsessed about hydrogen, um, but I was very passionate about it. And I began to be very, um, I began to fall in love with it. And when I say fall in love with it, I, I, I don't mean just because it was able to do what it did for me, but it's everywhere. I mean, our whole planet, you know, it's covered. There's so much water on the planet, all these trees and plants and grass. I mean, they all have water, obviously water, the majority of water is made of hydrogen and hydrogen is just a huge part of our lives. And it's, and it's a part of us and it's a part of the cosmos. And, and it became actually something kind of spiritual. I mean, even our sun is primarily made of hydrogen, all these discoveries, and then finding out that it really appeared to me that it was a source of all life. And so it eventually led me the numbers and the data led me to Japan. Uh, obviously, Japan is number one in hydrogen. They're the ones who really got it going, all these medical studies um, already medically approved in that country. And then it led me to their number one device, of course, their number one device. And, and when something's number one in Japan, it's a big deal because that's one thing that I've learned about their culture. Everybody in their culture seems to know what the best is. Like as far as cars are concerned, everybody knows, everybody in Japan knows Toyota is the best. I mean, they all know that they're the most reliable, well-built vehicles. They don't have to go ask an expert. It's just kind of common knowledge in their country. But when I got the Hydrofix, I was really surprised because I just thought, okay, here we go. Finally, a machine that's maybe going to be more reliable, which it was, um, make higher levels of hydrogen, which it did. And I just thought it was going to be a little better. And it offers the hydrogen gas inhalation. Um, I didn't totally understand the importance of the purity just yet. I knew that it was important. I just didn't understand how difficult it is to make extremely high pure hydrogen. I mean, I needed open heart surgery and my cardiologist told me, he's like, you don't, if you don't take care of this, it's going to kill you. Cause he was telling me I probably had 10 years and that was I don't know, six, eight years ago. I don't remember exactly. And after using the hydrogen, it probably took about a good six months, I think, if I remember correctly. And I had gone back to the cardiologist because they were doing a lot of testing. They were doing all sorts of tests on my heart to find out what we could do, you know, how bad it was, blah, blah, blah. And who knows, maybe my heart, you know, took a beating already and who knows how much time I have per se.
But what I what I can say is that after using that hydrogen for about six months and creating this kind of protocol and playing around with it, I've got better protocols now. But that machine is what made the difference because my heart condition just disappeared. And no other machine did that. And I couldn't understand it. The, the cardiologist couldn't understand it. Like, how does your condition just disappear? It doesn't make any sense. I had had that condition for at least two decades. I had had that condition for a very long time and I was ignoring it. Um, just thinking that someday it would, like I said, just end my life and that'd be the end of it. Lo and behold, this ends up getting rid of it. And in time, I actually, there was people who had the same condition who did my same protocol and their condition went away. So to see this little device do this, was just absolutely mind blowing. Um, but in the end, it, it helped me. And then eventually it helped also my father. My father was a really big, how would I say? It really showed me that the power of hydrogen because he didn't make all the changes that I made. He didn't change his diet. He didn't change his lifestyle. The only thing that he did was take the really clean water that I was showing him how to make, put it in the hydrogen device and do that. That was it. He would only use the hydrogen semi follow the protocol too he wouldn't even follow the protocol as best as he could and yet it got you know his from high blood pressure to high cholesterol glaucoma diabetes and arthritis i mean these conditions just going away in six to eight months um other than the glaucoma took three years that was the only one that took longer in fact it was a really funny story because i just thought it wasn't going to work for his glaucoma because after one year of using hydrogen he he has to get his eyes checked every year and they just said, oh, yeah, you still got glaucoma. Keep taking your medicine. And I thought, oh, it hasn't got rid of the glaucoma. And it, that's something that, you know, we could measure, just like you can measure diabetes, just like you can measure the blood pressure, just like you can measure certain things. And by the second year, I mean, this is two years of him using hydrogen and still testing positive for glaucoma. And I gave up at that second year. I thought, okay, it doesn't work for glaucoma. But you know what? It works for these other things. Good enough. And it wasn't until the third year that he called me and that's when I found out that his, his doctor had said, we don't show you have glaucoma anymore. This is not right. They thought they were making a mistake. So they ended up bringing him back and he got tested multiple times. And at the end, his glaucoma was basically gone. And that was, that blew me away because he had had that for like 30 years or more. So he'd had, he'd had it for a long time. And uh, it, it was quite remarkable. His, his doctors were blown away. They said, you don't, your glaucoma doesn't go away as you get older. It typically gets worse, not better. And for his to just get better and then eventually go away. And of course, they, they, they didn't know what to think of it. So they said, look, we still want you taking your medicine, but we don't want you taking the levels that you're taking. They put them on the absolute most tiniest, most minimum dose. And that was just because they were scared. They said, we don't know what to think of this. We've never seen anything like this. And if we can't seem to figure out whether you got glaucoma or not, because it looks like you don't, but then we stop giving you medicine and you go blind. It's not going to be good for you. So yeah, they were, like I said, they were concerned. They, they'd never seen anything like this. I mean, think about it. They'd never seen anything like this. This is not normal for somebody in their seventies who's had glaucoma for three decades or more for their glaucoma to just go away. So it's pretty remarkable. That's when I really saw the power of this little device uh, seeing, you know, and that was just the beginning. I mean, the countless emails that I've had and people telling me all these stories of things that have happened to them has just been absolutely mind blowing.